Alum, everyone. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be in the world. I'm so happy to be here. It's such a pleasure and a privilege to be here in the Light of Infinite Festival. So I want to thank the Erez, the person who invited me over, and it's just a wonderful joy to be here with all these beautiful, lovely teachers and rabbis and rabbitsons and musicians and healers and teachers. I'm very grateful. My name is Nir Menusi. I'm broadcasting from the Holy Land, Eretz Israel, uh, where I was born and where I live. And I want to talk to you today about the counting of the Omer, the time that we're in. And I want us to look at this time of year as a kind of model that the Jewish calendar is giving to us, uh, a model for healing. There is something about this period of time, the way it's structured, the way it's, it's located in the Jewish calendar, that it's really a kind of infrastructure, a kind of matrix for how to go through the process of healing and recovery and coming out of trauma, basically. If we look at this time of year, it leads us from Egypt, the Exodus coming out of Egypt and, and Passover, all the way to Shavuot, which is the holiday of the giving of the Torah. And if we take them as uh, psychologically, uh, as signifying or symbolizing something that's psychological, then we can interpret Passover coming out of Egypt as coming out of any situation in which we are in bondage, in a place of narrowness, in a place that we, we are alien to that place, a place that is, makes us be far away from who we should be, where we should be. It's a place of bondage, of slavery. And for each one of us, it's a different thing. We sometimes we go through several Egypts in our lives. It could be where we grew up. It could be, it, it may have to do with our family. It may have to do with a certain relationship that is limiting us in a very negative way in which there's no hope of, um, of improving. And so there are situations in life, it could be an addiction, it could be anything that is, has been limiting us and has, has, has served as a kind of pharaoh for us. And it's something that the only way to come out of it is to come out of it. That's the only way. But the thing is that coming out of Egypt is, relatively speaking, the easy part. And then there's a whole process, a whole journey, which for the people of Israel back then took seven weeks, and we are reenacting, recreating that time of that journey th with them for seven weeks. But it, it's very personal. Once we take the counting of the Omer as a model for our own lives and our own traumas and our own processes of healing, it could be uh, less than that, it could be more than that. We want to take this period of time and we should see it as a kind of exercise, an exercise in healing and recovery. So like I said, so Egypt is the trauma, is the negative place, is the bad relationship, is the addiction, is the, is the previous pattern or lifestyle, or, th or the, the thing that we want to come out of. And then what is Shavuot? Shavuot, the giving of the Torah, is really when we have a grasp on a new goal, when we have a path, when we have a calling. It's not enough to just be out of the negative relationship or negative environment. That's the first step, but it's not the last. And there's a whole journey, a whole process of recovering, of digesting what happened, of really coming out of the residues and remnants of the, the place of exile within us. And then uh, we can get to a new place in which we have a new goal. Getting the Torah is like getting a vision of your future, a vision of where you want to go, of where is your, your new real homeland, where you should be aspiring to get to and where you can live a full and healthy life, grounded in your, own, in, your, in your true environment, in your true space. You're not in that space yet, but you're on, you're on your way to get there. That's what the giving of the Torah is all about. So, now, th this idea that I just proposed, that the counting of the Omer is really a process or a journey of healing, it's not an arbitrary idea, it's not something that I made up, it's something that's deeply embedded 
into the story and into the understanding, the traditional understanding of this time. Why am I saying this? So let's start with the most simple understanding, the most simple explanation for why it took seven weeks for us to get to where we got the Torah. So we, you, you could say, well, it's a seven-week journey from Egypt to Sinai. But that's not the real explanation because the Torah could have been given in any other place. We, we could have received the Torah one day after coming out of Egypt. So the simplest explanation is, is that we had to recover physically from our wounds. So the idea that the counting of the Omer is a healing process, it's something that's embedded in the simplest level of this understanding. The people, the, the Hebrews, the Israelites, when they came out of Egypt, they were all wounded. One had a broken leg, one had a broken arm, one was uh, had his arm in a cast, and they were, they were wounded. And it's not, so the explanation that sages give is that it's not proper to receive the Torah when one is in such a state. But on a deeper level, it means that you're not prepared enough. You're not a vessel to contain the light of the Torah. The light of the Torah is infinite. You're never fully prepared, but there, there are difference, there's, there's a difference between there are levels of not being prepared, let's put it this way. So there's being really not prepared, and there's being somewhat not prepared. And we have to get to somewhat not prepared, because it's, it's never perfect. We're never there fully, but at least we need the wounds to heal. That's the main thing. So wh whatever it is, you can think about your own personal trauma, your own personal a past that that haunts you or it may be even something you're dealing with right now and you want to understand how to deal with the journey that awaits you once you come out of this dark and narrow place so the the simplest level is that we're talking about letting the wounds heal the israelites came out and they had they had uh, lashes from the whips and they had they had a lot of injuries and they, they had to heal. So that's one thing that shows us that this is, has to do with healing. Another thing is that we know that the counting of the Omer goes across, goes over three months. It starts at the middle of Nisan and lasts for two weeks. And then it covers the whole of Iyar. And then it goes for six more days into five or six, depending if you're, if you're counting the 50th day. But it goes into Sivan up until Shavuot. So that means that there's one month that's completely immersed in the counting, and that is Iyal, the month that we are in right now. And so Iyal is all about the counting of the Omer. You, we can say that about Nisan, that's the beginning of which is not in the counting, or Sivan, the ending of which is not in the counting, but Iyal is fully immersed. And why is that meaningful? Because Iyal, the word Iyal, which uh, w w the shortest way to write it would be Aleph Yud Reish, that stands for, it's the acronym for a, a, a short verse, uh, or a part of a verse, which is Ani Hashem Rof Echa. I, Hashem the Lord, is your healer. I healed you. And where was this said? It was said just before the month of Iyal, during this time, during the time of the counting of the Omer. It was said three days after the parting of the Reed Sea, the Kriyat Yam Suf, when the Israelites found a place of bitter water. It was really their first crisis. They found a place of bitter water. And if you remember, the word bitter appeared before. The Egyptians embittered our lives. So really, this is the first shock of realization that although we are out of Egypt, completely out of Egypt, the Egyptians have sunk. Where there's, there's no way that they're going to come back and haunt us. But we, then we realize that the bitterness is not over and done with. We may have left the bitter place, the people and the empire and the kingdom that enslaved us and embittered our lives, but um, the bitterness is still within us. There's a residue, There's a. It's, it has sunk in, and the fact that this sort of bitter water is coming out of the ground and we face it, it's really like realizing that the Egyptians in some way are within us. There's a residue a memory, a leftover of Egypt within us. And, th and th this bitterness is harder to solve. So it's solved by Moses, Moshe, taking this bitter wood and putting it into the water. And that, in a, in a miraculous way, sweetens the water. Somehow the bitterness and the bitterness together, they create sweet sweetness. But then God comes 
and says, Ani Hashem Rofecha. All the, all the illnesses, all the injuries that you suffered in Egypt, I now bless you that you won't have them anymore. And if you do, I will heal you from them. Ani Hashem Rofecha. That's the acronym of Iyar. So the month that is fully immersed in the counting, that takes up the, 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 the bulk of the counting of the Omer, is all about healing. So we have, we have two things so far. We have the fact that, that uh, the, the simplest understanding is that we had to heal from our wounds. We know that now that Iyar has to do with healing. We know that it's also psychological healing because the bitter water is symbolic of a sensation, a feeling within us. And then there's a final hint before we go into the actual model of how we can understand the counting of the Omer as a map, let's say, for healing. The final sort of illusion or hint is that if you look at all the different incidents that take place once the ten plagues are over and all the way up to Mount Sinai, then you can point to ten incidents I'm not going to give, give the full list, but I'm give, I'm, I'll give a few examples. But there are 10 incidents. Each one of them is a sort of rectification or healing for a certain plague, and in the exact reverse order. It starts with the firstborn, and it ends with, with rectifying the firstborn, the plague of the firstborn, and it ends with rectifying the, the plague of, of blood. And the idea behind this is that, although the Torah makes it very, very clear that the plagues differentiated, where there was a very clear boundary and, dis and distinction between the Egyptians and the Hebrews, and only the Egyptians received blows or plagues, and the Hebrews did not receive any plagues, that all assumes that there's no inter-inclusion between the two. But there is inter-inclusion. Inter-inclusion means that there were, an, there were sparks of, of Hebrews within the Egyptians, and we can see that some Egyptians were good. We know that the elder children wanted us to leave, and they tried to convince their, uh, the, the, the firstborn children, they tried to convince their parents. And we know we see some advisors of Pharaoh that they're, they, they started believing in Hashem. So there are, some, there are some good people there. Maybe they were a little bit saved. And we know that some of them were saved, for example, from, from Hail. Um, they're what they, they trusted Hashem, that he's going to give this plague, and so they protected their animals and they weren't harmed. And the same goes for us. There were Egyptians within the Jews. The fact that we had Egyptians actually coming with us, that's called the Erev Rav, that's symbolic of the fact that there, there, there are negative, unrectified elements within us, and they are the Egyptians within us. And that part of us did receive the plagues. So we actually had to recover in a way, in a spiritual way, we had to recover from the plagues. So if you go over the incidents, immediately after the plague of the firstborn, it says that the firstborn of the Jews, of the Hebrews, were sanctified. They were supposed to be were the original Levites. They were supposed to be the ones working in the serving in the tabernacle, and they were sanctified. They were protected. This was like a, a rectification for the plague of the firstborn. And then later on, just before the the splitting of the of the Red Sea of the Red Sea, we see that there's there's darkness. The cloud is creating darkness around the Egyptians and protecting the Jews. This is like a sweetening or a healing or rectification of the plague of darkness. And then the Egyptians drowning is like the, is there's, you can even see the actual, the, the, the terms used. It's like the hail and so on and so forth. And finally, just before Mount Sinai, we get water out of the stone. And that is a rectification for the original plague, the plague of blood. And the, the point of all this is that it's not just us versus the Egyptians. The Egyptians are part of us in a way, and they and the plagues also touched us. They touched the, the, the unrectified part of us, the part of us that wanted maybe to be in Egypt and to, to remain in Egypt. And all that has to do with the healing. We have to heal our wounds. We have to recover. We have to make peace with the place that we were before. So now let's look at the counting of the Omer itself, and let's try and figure out in what way the counting of the Omer gives us a model for healing. So first we need to understand that the counting of the Omer has three aspects to it, or three levels. Each day, when we're counting the days from Passover to Shavuot, we are really going in each day 
three different things are going on on three different levels. So I'll present this model and then we'll see how it relates to healing. So uh, the three levels can be understood very beautifully using three variations of the Hebrew word for counting, which is lispor, safar. So this word, this root, three-letter root, can be used in a variety of ways. And we'll point out to the three main ones. This is the Hasidic explanation for the three levels of the counting of the Omer. So the first, simplest level is called the level of actual counting. This is the word mispar. Mispar means number, counting. That's the physical act of standing and, and saying out loud the number of days that, is, that have passed since coming out of Egypt, since Passover. So number, mispar, is the first level. It has to do with counting the days. So then the second level is called sipur, a story. W what is the story about the counting of the Omer? The story of the counting of the Omer is that we are, it has to do with another aspect of the, of the counting, which is that we are working on rectifying ourselves from the inside, on bettering ourselves, on focusing on each and every aspect of ourselves that needs rectification and working on it. It has to do with, with um, learning, reading the ethics of the fathers. It has to do, if you know the Kabbalistic Sefirot and how they interinclude one with the other, it has to do with that also. This is we're really writing the story of our lives. So that we have the number, mispar, then we have the story, sipur. And then finally, there's a third level. And the third level is called sapir. Sapir is like sapphire, the stone, but it also means luminosity. It has to do with things becoming more and more l luminescent or more full of light. So now, how do did, how did these three levels work together? There's the counting, there's the story, and there's the, and there's the luminosity. So the idea is that this is like, it's all about building vessels. The first level is like the outside of the vessel. And then the, that's the counting. And then the middle one, the story, is like the vessel itself. We're writing, rewriting a story. And then the, the sapir, the luminosity, is like the inside of the vessel. Now, the, what's really beautiful about this is that really these three levels that are going on together, it's all about looking backwards, looking at the present moment, and looking at the future. So I'll explain. So when we're counting, we are counting how many days have passed since the Exodus. And we keep saying this is so and so many days uh, t to this period of time of the Omer. And we're focusing on the past. Wow, I've been away from that place for a day, for two days, for three days, for a week, for two weeks, for three weeks. And it, we're, it, we're being focused on the past. And we're focusing on the fact that this, b b by the way, I forgot this, that this first level, the simplest level, has to do with the fact that we are mourning. There are aspects of mourning in this time. We're not getting married. Uh, we're not supposed to have uh, live music. And we are not taking haircuts or shaving, that this is the halachic laws for this time. So the idea is that there's something, because of the what happened, the plague of the students of Rabbi Akiva, then there's something about this level of counting. It has to do with realizing, focusing on the fact that our days are numbered. The fact that we have this sort of morbid association of the plague of the students of Rabbi Akiva, that we remember that it's a time of death, that we remember that we're not supposed to get married during this time. And and music, by the way, some music is allowed. If it's holy music, if it's music that uplifts you and that connects you to serving Hashem, connecting to Hashem, that is allowed, by the way, I should say. But the fact that there is this level of mourning means that on this level, of the level of counting, we're focusing on each day just being grateful that we're alive, that every day that passes, we're still alive, we're breathing, and we have survived this terrible event of coming out of Egypt. We are here, and we made it, and each day we're counting. So this, the basic level, the outside of the vessel, has to do with the past. And it has to do with appreciating the fact that we're still alive, that we survived the, the trauma that we came out of. And then the middle level, 
which as I said is to do with reading the ethics of the fathers and working on on who we are and focusing on each day that has to do with the present that's the main thing that we're going through in this t- in this time it's every day is a different day if it's just numbers it's just more and more numbers it's all quantitative but if we're going up to the second level it's qualitative it, there's an element there's a different quality it's, there's a different combination of the Kabbalistic sefirot there's a different chapter to read in the ethics of the fathers there's a different light in the day it's not just numbers there's a different quality to each day so focusing on that quality and, and, and to listening what is the inner work of today what is the challenge of today this is the second level so the first level has to do with looking backwards and the second level has to do with looking at the present moment but the third level the level of sapir of luminosity of uh, of this is the inner aspect of the vessel we are gradually coming nearer and nearer the 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 time the, the point in time in which we are going to receive a new Torah a new goal a new hope for our lives and this is a sense of expectation of expectancy and it grows from day to day in a way we can say that on the, on the deepest level the counting of the Omer is also a counting down we're counting down to a point in the future that we know that things are going to radically change in that time sometimes we're not even sure when that time will be remember something beautiful about Shavuot Shavuot is the only holiday it's one of the three holidays of uh, of the three regalim that we're all coming to Jerusalem coming to the to the temple but it's the only holiday that doesn't have a date there were massive arguments about when the date should be what the Torah says is you start one day after Passover and even that is ambiguous and there were debates about this but the the, the main opinion we hold by is that it's one day after Passover you start counting 50 days and then you'll get to that date and during the time when they was to sanctify the months th- there was no date you couldn't know the date of Shavuot so there's something inherently unknown about this we just know and believe that it will come that if we go through these 50 steps if we go through this process of healing then we're going to get to this place of of well-being of being really connected to our soul root to our uh, to Hashem which is the ground of our soul root and to our future which is what the Torah gives us by the way another uh, um, allusion to the connection between the counting of the Omer and this process of healing I gave three in the beginning so there's yet another one the number of days that we're actually counting we're supposed to count 50 days but we're not counting the 50th day there's something about the 50th day the 50th gate it's called it has to do with not knowing it's something that is beyond counting in a way it's God counts it's counts that day for us so if you just take the 49 days then that number 49 has the numerical value of the Hebrew word chole, which is ill or sick and the idea is that there's something that it, throughout this journey every day we're healing but every day we're also a little bit sick still and the full healing only arrives at the 50th day so the 50th day the day of Shavuot is the full healing so the point of all of this is that while the first level of the Sefira which has to do with Mispar and counting is looking backward how many days passed then the middle level has to do with the present and the final one is all about looking towards the future and seeing the let's call it the light at the end of the tunnel the tunnel is the counting and the light is the 50th gate which really signifies the coming into contact <coughs> with our super conscious with the level the highest level of our of our soul root and that was it, that is where the full um, kind of healing takes place now f- one final uh, characterization just to round this all all this up is that we talked about mispar sipur sapir counting writing rewriting the story of our lives and and looking forward looking towards the future and we talked about um uh, uh yeah the the morning and the 
and working on, on rectifying the, the ethical aspect of the counting, and then there's just the counting down towards the Shavuot, there's yet another thing we should add, which is if we take the basic sort of uh, typology that we have in Judaism of a wicked man and a righteous man and a benoni, a benoni is someone who's between the wicked man and the righteous man, someone who has an inner struggle between, he has both really, he contains both, that too corresponds and goes along with these three levels. So the, the idea is that when we're counting the days, we and we're looking backwards and, and, and being grateful that we're out of Egypt more and more days, it's, this is the basic healing, it's healing or it's rectifying the wickedness within us or the parts that are not rectified within us. And so rectifying that, just realizing that there is there are aspects to me that are not imperfect. That's why I'm going through this process of this journey, is that I, th things within me need, need correction, rectification. They need tikkun. So the, the simplest level has to do with the past is rectifying the wicked person within me. One of the words, by the way, for this, the, the type of the wicked man, it, the, the, the usual word is rasha, but another word is avarian. And avarian, because he's doing averot, but we can also say that he's living in the past. The past is called avar in Hebrew. So the avarian is, is living in the past, is thinking about the past all the time, and he needs to be addressed. That past needs to be addressed because it's haunting you. And then the, the, person, the, the, the level of living the moment, of, of making each day count and meaningful and, and having a different quality, this has to do with being the benoni. The benoni is the one who's in the middle in 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 uh, in traditional Hebrew grammar, then the present tense was actually called benoni. Benoni is because it's in between bain, in between the past and the future. So the benoni is uh, living the moment. He's struggling right now. The the avarian, the rasha, the wicked man is pulling him to the past. Is trying to make him a victim of the past or to long for a lost past. Whatever it is, it's destructive. He's fighting that, and there's another aspect of him, the righteous man. This is our future self. And this is the third level. The third level of expectancy, of luminosity, of looking towards the future, this has to do with the, with the level of the righteous person within us too. This is our future perfect self. Right? I don't know if, if, the, if, if, if in English grammar you have something like a future perfect, but here we should have a future perfect. Future perfect is your future perfect self. It's who you will become when you receive your personal Torah, when you have your personal path laid out before you. So really this, is whole, this whole journey of the counting of the Omer is transitioning gradually from the place of, again, wickedness or fault or imperfection or being a slave to our, the negative aspects within us it's a it's a it's a path of it's a process of perfecting and gradually connecting with this future perfect self that we have okay so now we, we've lined up the three levels let's see how they translate into a process of healing and once again in 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 the jewish calendar this time it's taking seven weeks but when you want to utilize it when you want to apply it to uh actual processes that people are going through in their lives then it could be less, it could be more, and 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 again, there's something inherent, inherently unknown about the exact future date, just like in actual the actual holiday of Shavuot originally. So, what are the three levels in the healing process? So, the first level that has to do with looking backwards and counting the days. This level is having gratitude for the fact that we have made it out of there. And there's and this sense of gratitude is a very important thing. The fact that you're counting the days, it's it's almost like you're when you, when we're coming out of an abusive relationship or a negative environment we've been through, then it haunts us and we feel that it pulls us backwards. But as each day passes, we become increasingly more free from the sort of the latching hold of that dark past. 
and appreciating that, being grateful that each day that passes, there's a certain level of healing that happens automatically. It happens in and of itself. It's just, as the saying goes, time heals all wounds. And it's not a, an exact thing to say, time doesn't heal all wounds, but he, it does heal all physical wounds, and it does contribute significantly to healing from emotional and psychological wounds. And just giving room for that kind of experience and, and, and just noticing that we're slightly less agitated as each day goes by. We're slightly less, we're, we're becoming increasingly more calm and more secure and more confident in the knowledge that we are not being pulled backwards by this kind of dark gravitational force or pull of whatever it is, whatever traumatic experience we've had or the traumatic uh, enslaving place we're, come out, we're coming out of. So the first level, it's just letting time pass and, and appreciating and being grateful for each day that passes. If you know, there's a system called, it's a very famous system called the 12 Steps. And what happens in the 12 Steps system, and there's a lot of arguments, by the way, among Jewish rabbis, how much of this can and should be used, um, and how much of it uh, is can be integrated into, let's say, um, a Torah work, or, or, or working with our processes in, in a way that's, faithful to, let's say, the principles of Judaism. There's a, a major argument about this. But I think there's definitely, like everything in the world, there's, it, there's something very, very powerful about it, and there's also something to be, let's say, wary of. So I think the, the, the it's, and it's actually the same thing. So the, the, the thing that is powerful about this, or one of the things, uh, there are several, but one of the things is that, and it's a famous thing, is that they're counting the days of how many days you've been sober from whatever it is you've been addicted to, whether it's alcohol or drugs or, or sexual relations. It could be anything. But the, you're counting. And the fact that they're counting and they're saying, well, I've been sober for 120 days, for 70 days, and so on, is that something that is, at the same time, there's something a little bit uh, maybe too focused on the past, maybe too, um, it, it, they have this principle that you're never fully recovered and you're never fully uh, uh, coming out of your addiction, and I think there's something a bit too deterministic, a bit too uh, limiting about this approach, but definitely there's, an, there's truth to that also. The fact that you can count and appreciate that, uh, it strengthens you. It gives you koach, it gives you strength, knowing that you've been, you've, you're outside of the nightmare, and, and each day you know that you become stronger. So the first level which is the, the, the first, the basic level of the counting, just counting the days. Um, it, we, we, we're focusing on the past, but it's a good thing because we're focusing on how much we are distancing ourselves from the past. And it has to do with rectifying or with dealing with the part of us that's imperfect, that, uh, that, that has faults, that has weaknesses, major weaknesses, and may be sucked back into that dark past. So this is the first level, and you could it could um, it could take place um, just by having you know maybe group sessions or talking to someone at, or writing down in your diary that so many days have passed and you're becoming stronger. And again, time is time is at your side, is by your side. Time is doing some work for you, and and just in appreciating that is a major major thing. So I think, and, and, and just even think about it in the simplest way, if you have someone recovering from trauma or someone that's going through a process of um, coming out of an addiction, and just the fact that they're put in, in, a, in, a, in a place, in a, in a kind of environment in which they can, um, uh, they can gradually go through a process, just the fact, the mere fact that time passes, just the passage of time itself has a healing aspect to it. So that's the first level. Second level, the level of sipur, of story, of rewriting our life story, of focusing on the present day, on pr focusing on the moment. This, in when translated into a process of healing, of recovery, would be 
having a new goal, a little goal or a task for each day. Here we're focused very much on making it through the day itself. And here we're not being troubled by the past. The past is past and, and, and it's very not comforting and reassuring to know that it's it, and it, it, a greater distance is, is, is being accumulating between us and the past. But the major work, the main thing we have to work on is focusing on the present moment. And the present moment is really all you have. You have now. Now I need to work on, on becoming a better person, becoming a stronger person, becoming someone who's more independent, some, becoming someone who's more mature, becoming someone who's more, who can take more responsibility. And so this moment, at this level of the counting, when translated into healing, is all about finding a goal just for today. So today I want to make a drawing. Today, I want to write something that will, that will make me uh, happier or stronger. Today, I want to learn something, and this is my goal for learning for this day. I need to grow each day, and each day it's a different goal, it's a different task. That's why we have the whole system of the Kabbalistic Sefirot that are interincluded, if you can go to that level. And if you can't, then you, still, you can still make your own goal for that day. There are many books today and many WhatsApp groups and I have my own WhatsApp group that you, I, I send a message every day for what you can do in this day, how to rectify a different aspect of your life. Um, but, and there are, other, there are others who do this and, and beautiful work. So the idea is that you find a goal for each day and you know that this will, this will make this day special. It will make this day a different day. And so each day of the counting of the Omer, I'm I'm sort of strengthening another aspect within me which I can now work on. And, and maybe it's doing something that I was afraid to do yesterday. I was afraid to do a week ago. But now some more time has passed. And now I feel that I may be, uh, I'm open to going out, for example, and, and having a good time somewhere. And I'm opening to meeting someone from that past maybe, which would have been more threatening to me a month ago, let's say, but now I feel that I'm strong enough to maybe face that thing that I've been putting off. So each day has its own task. A beautiful thing to do when you're going through a kind of, as I said, a process of recovery or healing, is that you can maintain a diary. You can keep a diary of what's going on. And each day you write down what was your challenge today and how you resolved that challenge and, and what what... What what you what did you go through this day that um, made you a better, stronger, more mature person and brings you cl closer to your goals? So this, in many ways, is the main work. And remember, you are the author of your life. An author in Hebrew is sofer. Again, come to, it's coming from the same root. Same root is about numbers, and it's about telling a story, writing a story, being the author of your life. And and also, that's the next level is the level of luminosity. So, again, first level in healing is all about just letting time pass and appreciating the passage of time and the way it heals you and helps you and gets you on your path and just realizing that you're safe and you're becoming increasingly more safe from the traumatic event. And then the second level is about making each day count and unique and special and finding a goal and something you can do during the day that you'll feel that you have that it was a, a day well spent if you if you make the schedule that you want to have and if you you get up in the morning and you know uh, what's your goal by the way there's something beautiful because as we know the in the way the 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 Hebrew calendar works is that the dates don't change at midnight like in the Gregorian calendar where at midnight the date changes and each day each 24 uh, cycle is from midnight to midnight for us, the new day starts in the evening of the day before, not at midnight, but in the actual evening when the sun sets or when the stars come out. And the point um, for us now is that you can start the, the day before you go to bed. You can start the day in the evening by planning the next day and having a very clear goal before you go to bed and you'll sleep much more peacefully if you know exactly what are your goals for the next day? 
It could be practical goals, but the more important thing is a, is a, is a goal of, within the journey of your inner growth, whatever it is you want to learn, whatever it is you want to write or paint or, or achieve, there's something you need to, you must have a goal that's not just practical. If you want to write, down, write something down in your diary, there has to be a unique goal. And again, if you know the Sefirot, that can help you. If you don't, you can find other sources of inspiration. Maybe it's just listening. Maybe it's reading the daily portion of the Torah. Maybe it's just listening to the world. Hashem speaks to us in many ways. And then what about the, f- the third and final level? The third and final level, which is all about counting down towards the day in which I believe and I hope and I, and I aspire that in that day I will receive um, a, a, a new path, a new calling, a new Torah, a new uh, vision of my future, is that as you're going through this journey, you need to do something which I call inhaling from the future. Inhaling from the future is telling yourself, right now I'm in the middle of this path, the middle of this journey, and things are not perfect, and I'm dealing with all kinds of things, but I know and I believe, and I've been through this some other, in other instances in my life, which you can say to yourself, is that it'll all work out for the best in the end. And if you remember that, and you hold on to that thought, then you can inhale from the future. It's like borrowing from the future, or getting a loan from the future. The future has an abundance of joy and optimism and hope to give you. It's like infinite. And so you can borrow endlessly. And you just need a, you know, like, a, like one breath of, you, you, you sort of grab like a pipe, like a lifeline from the future, and you inhale from the future. And on a, on a more practical level, it means setting a date, a goal in the future. It's like, like throwing an arrow and, and saying that place, that day in the calendar, that's my 50th day. Again, could be two weeks, could be a year from now. But the point is that you have a point. You say, at that point, I'm opening a fresh page. That day, I'm going to start a new job. I'm going to move to a new place. I'm going to start working on a new project. I'm going to resolve whatever it is I can resolve with the issues that I'm dealing with right now, and I'm going to start something new. And a, n- a new life begins that day, and I'm committed to that goal, to that day. So the fact that the people came out of Egypt and they knew that 50 days from now they're going to receive the Torah, that held them on. It gave them hope. It gave them energy. They knew that whatever it is we're going through, with n- not having food and not having water and not and dealing with enemies and dealing with Amalek, and, but they knew that, and, and without that um, sort of utopic, point in the future of knowing that I have a date with God in the future, I have a date with Hashem at Mount Sinai, and, and we and save the date, you know, so save the date, find a date in the future, and, and you know, circle it in your calendar, and then, you're, and then you have a feeling of counting down to this event, and this is the giving of your Torah, so um um and also, by the way, and the final thing is making plans for that day. And you can do that every day. Every day you can add, you can have a page in your diary, maybe the, the, ad, the last page of your diary. You can have a page that is, what am I going to do in the day after? Once I'm, I'm past this uh, period of time of recuperation, of recovery, what are my plans for the day after? And, and just creating that dream, opening the dream up and making it more and more detailed. And the more detailed the dream is, and in a way, as you're coming closer, you can see Mount Sinai sort of looming in the, in the horizon, becoming closer and closer to you. As it's becoming closer, it's becoming more lucid and more clear. And you could think, that's, well, that's because I'm, I'm getting near, nearer and nearer, and I can see more of it, but it's not, it's not how it works. What is, you're painting that mountain with your dream, by, by, and by dreaming in a way that's more detailed and by having more plans and more ideas for what you want to do, not about things happening to you because that you can't control and it doesn't really uplift you in any meaningful way. But I'm talking about 
um, I'm talking about making decisions and plans and again a detailed and increasingly more detailed vision of the future. That is the final third level of the counting of the Omar as it's translated into a healing process. So just to sum the whole thing up and with that I leave you is that we have this gift in the Jewish calendar and it leads from Passover, the time of bondage and hardships and bitterness all the way to Shavuot, which is a, a moment, a historical moment of inspiration, of realization of where our future is and how are we going to look like as a people, as a nation. We're going to have this and this holidays and this and these mitzvot, mitzvot and we're going to have um, uh, all these verses and all this Torah, this massive, beautiful, um, layered Torah that we're going to explore forever and ever. And all this is happening in Shavuot. And in between, there's a time of recovery and healing. And on one level, it's all about distancing yourself more and more from the past and letting the passage of time heal you and appreciating that. On a, on a higher level, it's about making each day meaningful and, in a, and having a different sort of shade. I call this whole journey uh, 50 Shades of Light, right? It's, it's, it's based on, on a well-known, very, very negative sort of uh, cultural thing. But the, uh, in, in Hebrew, by the way, it's just you take away one letter. It, you take the word afol, gray, and you take away one letter, it becomes O. So from 50 shades of, of afol, you get to sh 50 shades of O, 50 shades of light. So each day should have a different shade of light. It's a different shade of light that you do something unique and special with that day. And the final level is making plans, inhaling from the future, setting a goal that that place is where I want to reach and I want to become that future perfect self that awaits me in my personal Shavuot and also in our collective Shavuot which is coming in a few weeks from now. So thank you so much for being here and for listening and I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this gave you something and my name is Nir Minusi. Uh, you're very much welcome to follow me on YouTube and I have a WhatsApp group too, and a mailing list, and you can uh, find the link, uh, the link to all links in my presenter page here at the festival. And I really, really hope to, uh, I look forward to hearing from you. If there's, there, there's any reaction or things you want to add, I wasn't able to see the, uh, the, the reactions and replies here, but I will afterwards. So, but if you have anything to add or ask, then, please feel free. You can contact me uh, with, with, that, with the link in the presenter page and just share whatever it is that maybe uh, you got from this class. So thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and you enjoy the rest of the speakers. And may we all uh, merit to have a very beautiful Lagba Omer next week. That's the holiday of the giving of the inner dimension of the Torah of Kabbalah and Hasidut and really what keeps me alive, let's say, uh, as a Jew in this time, is having this beautiful gift that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai gave us of the Zohar and everything that came out of it. So may we all have a beautiful, wonderful Shabbat and a beautiful, wonderful Lag Omer, and all the way up to Shavuot and beyond. I love you all. Thank you so much. And I will see you some other time. So long and goodbye.